you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is a gentleman who is the president and CEO of the Rhythm and Blues Preservation Society. I'm speaking to Mr. Perry Thompson. Mr. Thompson, how you doing, sir? I'm good. How you doing, brother? I appreciate being on here. Oh, no problem, man. Um, we had uh, made contact through, uh, I believe it was Instagram. Yes, sir. And uh, I thought, oh, okay, this is a, a brother who's uh, right after my own heart, you know, love soul music. Uh, but we're going to get into the Preservation Society and what that's all about. Uh, but before we do, for those who don't know uh, Perry Thompson, tell us about Mr. Thompson. Well, I'm originally from New York. Um, I've been musically inclined since I was young. I started playing instruments and singing at a young age. I'm also a graduate of the Guardi High School of Music and Performing Arts in Manhattan. Uh, so many great, um, you know, people people came from that from that high school and that lineage. So um, yeah, all, music has always been a been a part of me, and I've always grown up in, with black music in my house. So this is something that I always wanted to do from from this organization. So um, I'm just uh, privileged and humbled to be doing this. Okay, uh, you said you always wanted to do this. Why? Well, um, I've been wanting to do this for about 15 years, but, um, you know, sometimes, you know, the universe doesn't give you that, you know, it's always not that time. You know, you get a sign from the, you, you know, you get that sign, but um, about 2014, you know, you know, I, I decided to um, get this going. So I saved my pennies and my, my dimes and my nickels, but it's not cheap to open up a nonprofit and deal with Lloyd's and all that. So uh, it took about four years to um to open it up in 2018. And the reason why I wanted to start is because I wanted to create an organization to honor those who contribute to black music culture. You know, there are organizations out there that do uh, you know, honor black music, but one may be just jazz, one may be just R and B, one may just be on um, you know, uh gospel music. The Rhythm Blues Preservation Society, we acknowledge everyone in Black music culture. And I, not, and I say that humbly and respectfully. I'm not putting it on any other organization, but we acknowledge everyone in Black music culture. It's not about how many records you sold, how many awards you won. You could be a one-hit wonder. As long as you contribute to Black music culture, whether it's from the early 1900s to the 2000s, we're going to acknowledge you. And not just artists. We all... You know, if you are a DJ, if you are a black music journalist, uh, we honor you because you contributed, you had a part in preserving black music culture. Okay. So even though um, the name is the Rhythm and Blues Preservation Society, you're saying that you're accepting of all forms of uh, music done by African Americans. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And so what we'll get into what it takes to open up a organization like yours. Uh, but what's the, um, I know you said you want to preserve or honor black music. What, what does that entail? Um, well, I'll, I'll let well, you go from there. Well, um, on my social media, for, since I started this, I always posted on black music history, whether it be someone's birthday, whether it be someone that no one's never heard about, um, you know, um, I, that's what I've done for the past year or so, posting on Black music history um, and, and all genres of Black music, R&B, jazz, soul, hip hop. And, um, you know, and I've gotten great response. A lot of people are like, wow, I never heard of that person. Wow. You know, it could be from the 1800s. You know, it doesn't matter what, you know, era that person, that artist was in. Um, we're going to acknowledge it, whether you're swing, jazz, you know, um, even there were black country artists from in the 1800s. A lot of people don't know about them. You know, um, so we, like I said, that's what we're all about, preserving those who contribute to black music culture, honoring them as well. Okay. Um, and so I, I also read in your bio that you're also a journalist as well. Yes, sir. I've written about 10 articles. I've written for soulmusic.com. I've also written for uh, soulpatrol.com and I'm a contributing writer to uh, Groove Magazine. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and so the let's get back to the Preservation Society. Um, mm -hmm. 
first of all, what does it take to open up an organ? I know you said it's a nonprofit, okay. um, but what else does it take to have a, are you registered with like, I don't know, uh, United States? Oh, yeah. Something, oh, yeah. something, 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 something. Yeah, we are definitely a nonprofit. We register as a nonprofit. We are a charity organization. Um, as I say, it's not, it's not, it, you know, you guys go through a lot of red tape. You know, I had to hire attorneys to, um, you know, get everything. You know, you know, it took, you know, it only took about to get the paperwork going with my attorneys. It took about a year or so to get everything, you know, le you know, all the paperwork done and all that. So, um, and to keep it up, it's, um. You know, I'm learning every day about keep you know about, about operating a nonprofit as a CEO. You know the administrative work, and um, you know just keeping up with that. But I have a, a great partner, my vice president COO. Her name is Reverend Dr. Sonja Lee Friedman, uh, aka Queen Diva. She's my vice president, and um, she's been you know with she's been she has my back, and we're a great team, and uh, I appreciate her help as well. You know, she does the administrative work. She does our flyers. She does our promotion. And, um, you know, I'm a, I'm on the phone making calls and speaking to people and making appointments, making it, setting up interviews. So, you know, um, just today, I just had about, you know, before you, I had about three other interviews. So, you know, so I'm always on the phone making calls, making sure everything's up to date with the paperwork. And uh, she just had... You know, she makes sure that everything is uh, up to par. So it's always good to have someone behind, a great team behind you when you open up a business or a nonprofit that uh, believes in your mission as well. That's also very important. Okay. And I, I guess with being a, a nonprofit, um, you're um, soliciting, do you solicit like donations or how do you keep the, the movement? Yeah. Uh, movement we are going? a nonprofit organization and um, we accept on charitable donations. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yes. All right. And do you guys do, um, um, you said you do, you do various events, um, I, I guess to educate the public yeah. on the contributions of, uh, African Americans in music. Uh, yes, but I've been, yes, I've done, uh, last, last November, uh, which is hip hop history month. I did a lecture on at Stock University of New Jersey on the history of hip hop. And I had a legendary hip hop artist by the name of Reggie Reg from the Crash Crew. And he spoke to the kids and there was a great response. And um, it was, you know, they really learned about the culture of hip hop. And this past February at the same university, I had a two hour um, lecture on Dr. Dr. Nina Simone it was a, on her birthday. And her grandson was even there attended. So that was a great thing. Politicians were there. And um, the Rhythm and Blues Preservation Society has been acknowledged by Governor New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy. I have a letter from Governor Phil Murphy. I have a proclamation from Assemblyman Don Guardian, and Atlantic City Council members uh, granted me a resolution on my contribution to Black music culture. Okay. And do you go into like the elementary schools and stuff too? To yes, um, um, we have been honored uh, to be with Rhythm Blues Preservation Society. We are now vendors of the Department of Education in New York. So that means that I can now have seminars, workshops in the public school system in New York, and I'm going to be doing that as well in New Jersey. So once I become a vendor in the Department of Education in New Jersey, I'll be doing that as well. I'm going to be doing my first lecture in New York uh, next year. So we can do seminars, workshops in public schools and in high schools in New York. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a licensed vendor now. All right. Congratulations, man. Um, so where do you um, where do you see uh, your organization going? I mean, I know it's a nonprofit and but you're yeah. So where do you where, where do you see? I'm assuming you're trying to make more and more people aware of the contributions yeah. because sometimes our contributions yes, get watered yes. down or whatever. Um, yes. How, how how do you how do you plan on doing? It? Are you traveling the country to um, promoting yeah. events? Well, and yeah, I'm going to be um, opening chapters in New York and LA next year. So okay, I'm going, to to, I'm going to try to make like the NAACP. I'm going to have chapters all around. Nice. Uh, that's, that's our goal, and our goal is to create a um, curriculum 
of African American music for the uh, for the college level and public school level. You know, we're working on that now. Uh, having a curriculum, we want to create a curriculum to actually bring to the edu to the board, to the education uh, board of education um, for have a curriculum African American music culture because I believe it's very important because a lot of our young people want to be in the music industry. They want to be in R and B. They want to be in hip hop. But if you're going to be part of the culture, you have to learn the culture. Understand who came before you. You stand, you know, I stand on the shoulders of giants, and I recognize that. And the young people, we, they need to understand that as well. You know, um, you're standing on the shoulders of giants who came before you, who dealt with the racism, who dealt with not getting paid, who dealt with, you know, discrimination. So it's very important to learn about the culture who contribute to this culture. So that's what we want to do. That's what we want to teach the young people about who contributed uh, to this culture called Black music. Okay. Um, the name suggests, um, well, it's not suggests, it says Preservation Society. Do you think that um, R&B music is somehow uh, diminished or going away? Um, black music nowadays, now, the state of black music now, um, there are some there are some artists out there who are really contributing to the culture, but unfortunately, you know, you have your good and your bad, you know, and um, you know, we as 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 your organization bring black bring back soul music, you know, and I was like, wow, okay, I definitely dig where you're coming from, um, because so many um, artists nowadays, some are not well, not so many. There are some artists out here. Who um, you know, I'm not judging them. Some of their lyrics, are kind of, you know, that risque and all that. And um, if that's what they want to do. That's fine. I'm not judging them, but I think we need to bring it back to how you know you don't have to be so blunt as far as you know your message. You know, you want to talk about intimacy, making love. You don't have to be so blunt. I mean, when Marvin Gaye said, "Let's get it on," we know what he was talking about. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. BGRC WQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Hey, I'm Kenny Lattimore, and you're checking out the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with my brother Todd Woodson. Now, back to our conversation. Right. You know what I mean? Right, he, right. He, he, he's talking about. You know what I mean? So now, and even with, you know, I, you know, with the men nowadays, you know, some, you know, there's some, you know, Maxwell still out there performing. Kim, I love Kim. Um, I love her. She's bad. Layla Hathaway, she's great. I think Lily Hathaway is one of the greatest, who's Donnie Hathaway's daughter. She's one of the greatest singers out there. You know, um, Rochelle Farrell, um, even Anita Baker, a legend, she's going back on tour. You know, there are still some great artists, the legends are still performing till today. Temptations and the Four Tops are coming to Atlantic City. So, you know, um, I just like to see more, you know, of the legends, because there's some, men, there are some legends, the legends still recording. Manhattan's just put out the album last year. Nobody knew about it. They put yeah, I didn't, know. I didn't know about it. Yeah, they put out the album last year. And see, that's what I'm saying. There are artists who are still recording, still performing, and they're not getting the proper marketing or promotion that they should. And that's unfortunate. You know, and, and it's a great album by the Manhattan's, you know, and there's some other artists out there who will come out who got great music. Their fans come out with some great music. So it should be a balance. I mean, I would like to see some of the young people, when they're on tour, bring some of the legends on your tour. Have a balance. I, I would love to see that. I would love to see, you know, some of the young people who are on tour, not just in arms, but hip hop as well. You know, you on tour, hip hop tour. Um, bring some of the legends with you on tour. You know, because you're standing on the show of the giants. These are the ones who are the foundation of black music. Acknowledge them, give them their roses now. So I think that's, I would like to see that more, uh, more of the young people acknowledging the legends 
and, and you know, give put them on your record. Let them do a bar. Let them sing on your record. You know, that's a that's a great honor. You know, they'll be honored to do that. So black music um in 2022, I would just like to see more of a balance, more of you know, the old and new come merging more, merging more on record and on tour. You know, because we have so much social media nowadays. You know, it, it, it's not impossible to do that. It's really not. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I'm, I'm grateful for uh, organizations like yours. Uh, even what we do, we just try to spread the word and uh, right. expose um, the world to um, great artists who may not, like you said, get the the backing or the the notoriety sometimes. But that's why we have a podcast that's why you have a preservation society well uh, exactly. yeah so what 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 else can we do man i mean it seems like um the um you know i always tell people you know we don't even have bands anymore back in when i was growing up there was like mm. bands are were plentiful uh we don't have mm. bands anymore and groups and it's um you know you it's, know yeah you're right i don't mean, because but i was just recently last in august I attended a uh, a show that honored, um, it was called Living Legends, and they honored Cronice Affair, they honored Instant Funk, they honored D-Train, and they performed live, and they were great. These are legendary artists yeah. from the 70s, still rocking. Like, wow, putting on a great show. Ch the group Change was there performing. It was a great, great award show and a great performance by legendary artists. And you're right, the bands are not, you don't even hear about bands anymore. I mean, Climax is still out there. That's, and they were bad. They're still performing. Climax yeah. is still doing their thing. You know what I mean? War, yeah. the group War, they're still doing their thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you're right. I mean, the live bands, Earth and the Fire, still out there doing their thing. You know, so I would love to see a young R&B band, you know, now, you know, you know, coming out. I mean, that's very important. I mean, um, you know, um, I love listening to those great bands in the 70s. I mean, because you had so many to choose from. You had War, you had Brass Construction, you had Slave, you had uh, uh, Mandrill. <laughs> a lot of people forgot about Mandrill. You know what I mean? And yeah. like you said, there's no, there's no band. I would love to hear it. I would love to go to a live concert and hear a funk band, you know, of, of today. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, well, maybe, like I said, with uh, the stuff that we're doing and stuff that you're doing, um, maybe we can, you know, maybe rekindle some of that, um, some of that sound from, from yesteryear, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else, Mister Perry? What else do we know about the uh, Rhythm and Blues Preservation Society? Well, um, December eighteenth is our Founders Day. It's our fourth year in, in existence. So this December eighteenth is our Founders Day, and we're going to be doing a live IG, um, Perry Thompson RB PSOC. So me and my vice president are going to be doing a live Instagram. Um, so anyone can join in. You know, wish us a happy Founders Day on that day. So um, where you know everyone, you know, come on board. You can come on board. Enjoying the live and wish you a happy Founders Day, and uh, you know, um, and we're looking forward to that. And um, next year, like I said, I'm gonna be doing lectures. I'm um, I'm working on some more articles. I'm slowly working on a book on uh, Black music culture. So I'm particip I'm participating in having that out next year. A book um, as well. Um, I'm gonna be doing my own podcast, and once I have my podcast, I'm gonna have you on there. <laughs> I, I, I love to be on there. Yes, so you know we're you know we're a new organization. We're, you know we I can't I have nothing really to complain. You know, in the past year or so, we've accomplished so much within the first year of us really getting this going. And um, my part, my vice president and I, you know, we really work well together. And, um, you know, we're just moving forward in 2023 and beyond, you know, um, you know, I'm going to be doing, you know, more, um, you know, teaching out of state, you know, I just, uh, just got a contact today for North Carolina. They want to meet, they want me to do a lecture at, at, um, at a, at a, at an event at a, at a facility there in North Carolina. So I was fortunate about that. 
I'm gonna be working with the uh, uh, the Detroit uh, Museum of uh, Rock. It's actually a museum in Detroit, and um, I'm gonna be working with them as well. So, and I've interviewed some legendary artists in the past year. I've interviewed Melissa Morgan. I've interviewed Claudette Robinson of the Miracles. I've interviewed uh, Reggie Calloway from Midnight Star. That was a great interview. Uh, Daryl Gibbs from the Crown Heights Affair. Um, and that was a great interview. So I'm just really, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. I mean, I'm just um, appreciate the support that we've been receiving and, um, you know, the love that, you know, and the acknowledgement that what we're doing and people feel it's very important that what, what we're doing. Um, and I definitely acknowledge what you're doing, bring back soul music. Very important. We have to preserve our music. No one else is going to do it but us. Nobody right. else. Right. And black music culture is all around the world. There's no that there, there's no other music that has and been influenced by everybody. Everybody, no matter what race, you know, is influenced by black music. You know what I mean? So the only ones that's gonna keep preserving it and honoring those are us. So um it's very important to preserve black music. It's very important what we're doing. Um, uh, because uh black music has touched the world here in America and Europe and the UK, you know, everyone loves black music. Yeah, I uh I've been fortunate enough to interview artists from around the world and I tell you too mm. what T when I asked them who who their influences were, it's always Motown, Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson. I mean, I can just I, I know the answer before I even ask it. And it's yeah. amazing because a lot of these artists weren't even born at the time of Motown's heyday. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, so that definitely just shows me that there's a, a love out there, even though sometimes I don't think we um, we really appreciate it here. But if you talk to artists yeah. who perform overseas, they say uh, R&B music is love. Yes, sir. That's a very good point you brought up, brother. Yes. I totally agree with you. And it's unfortunate that Black music isn't appreciated here as overseas. I mean, um, you're right. You're right about that. I mean, Melba Moore just had a number one song in Europe. Nobody even knows about it here. Yeah. Number one in Europe. Yeah. Nobody yeah. Even knows about it. You know what I mean? So, and that's a great point. I mean, Black music is definitely more appreciated overseas than here. I mean, because you know, black radio, unfortunately, they're not going to play Melba Moore's new song. They're not going to play the Manhattan's new album. They're not going to do that, and that's unfortunate because you can you can have a balance. You can play the new stuff, and you can play some. Uh, you know, it's about it's all about balance. That's what it's all about. I agree. I agree. I concur wholeheartedly. Uh, Mr. Thompson, how can people reach out to you if they're interested in learning more about? the Rhythm and Blues Preservation Society. Yes, uh, my Instagram is Perry Thompson, RBPSOC. My Twitter is RBPSOC. My Facebook is at RBPSOC. Also, TikTok is at RBPSOC. And the Rhythm and Blues Preservation Society is a nonprofit organization. Uh, and all uh, you like to make a charitable donation, you can go to my P.O. Box. is P.O. Box 7401. Atlantic City, New Jersey, 08404. Uh, you could go to our cash app, dollar sign RBPSOC18, and all donations are tax deductible and appreciated. Okay. We'll get all that posted in the show notes on this episode, as well as on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Uh, Mr. Thompson, uh, I really appreciate you, sir. Yes, sir. We got to continue. We got to work together, brother. I, I love I, you. Man, you read my mind. I just said we got to keep in touch and just yes, keep sir. other keep each other lifted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. I'm going to, uh, like I said, spread the word about the organization. Like I said, it was foreign to me until I ran into you on uh, Instagram. Um, but I'm going to give you the last word. Hey, you know, my last word, you know, let's, you know, as I said, black music culture is very important. I'm very humbled at what um, I'm doing, and I'm very fortunate what glad what you're doing, us preserving the culture of black music. We have to keep continue to do this um, and let the let the young people know that you want to be a part of this, it's a culture. Understand who contributed to black music, understand their stories, 
You're, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. Appreciate the culture. Appreciate the music. You know, keep it. Let's let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it soulful. Let's keep it um, original. Um, you know, and all giants of hip hop, reggae, soul, jazz, reggae. Let's embrace all of it. And I uh, appreciate me being on your. Appreciate you letting me be on your podcast, sir. And uh, you know, let's just continue what we're doing, brother. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. All right. That's Mr. Perry Thompson from the Rhythm and Blues Preservation Society. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Perry Thompson of the Rhythm and Blues Preservation Society. You can find out more about the Preservation Society on their social media sites listed below. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.